Good morning. Uh, thank you to the organizers for giving us the chance to speak here. It's um, always a pleasure to speak here because it reminds you of why we're doing what we're doing. So talks like the last one and to see also some friends in the audience is great. Um, so I'd like for the next 15 minutes or so to introduce you to what we're doing at CDI. Uh, let's see if I can make this work here. I believe this is the forward button. So first of all, just a little bit of a primer. Um, CDI is a wholly owned subsidiary of Fuji Film Company as of about a year and a half ago. We're headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin, and we believe we're the world's largest manufacturer of IPS cells and their derivatives. Um, we have about 175 people, lots of stem cell experience. Uh, we're very good at pluripotency and controlling pluripotency as an operating system. Um, lots of patents because we think deeply about freedom to operate and making sure that our customers have the right to use what we manufacture. Um, we, and we have two divisions, the life sciences division, which makes products for the research market, and the therapeutic cellular therapeutics division, which is focused on developing cell therapies, obviously. What we do specifically is develop and manufacture cells, human cells, to a specification. We have two business units, one that makes a cell to a research specification, and one that makes one to a therapeutic specification. Um, but at the root, that's who we are. Uh, our catalog in terms of life sciences uh, is pretty extensive. Uh, I think there's 14 products now. These are all highly purified, authentic human cells. They exhibit the key functions that you'd expect for that cell type. Um, they're cryopreserved, available today. You can order any one of those right now and get them in, you know, drop ship to you directly. Uh, built based on a, a quality system that is both ISO and GMP, um, so that we're prepared for both the research and the therapeutics market. Every reagent, every incubator operator, complete traceability. Um, and we, you know, we really do manufacture in the billions daily. So we've got this system under industrial control. That was our objective when we, when we founded the company. So um, in terms of cell therapy, which is what I'll focus on today, we have some core design principles uh, for our approach to cell therapy. The first is that the cell that we're developing is the actual target cell that's lost in the disease. So in cardiac disease, you've lost cardiac heart muscle. In Parkinson's, it's a midbrain dopaminergic neuron. It's the specific cell that you lose mostly in aging diseases. Secondly, the manufacturing platform that we develop is built to scale and to quality from the beginning. When we go into IND, we are phase three enabled. That's our goal, and so far we've met that. So you don't, won't, we will not have, and our partners will not have those translation issues, um, and this is what we do really well. So uh, we have the ability to, to immune match the patient, either in a fully autologous fashion or in an HLA matching strategy, which I'll describe to you, which we think we're leading um, globally in, in, in executing on, if needed. You need to have good preclinical models because many of these diseases have sort of basically irrelevant models. So pick diseases where you can actually have confidence the animal data you get is good data. And finally, the surgical technique needs to be designed so that it can be performed in more than an esoteric single use facil single facility around the world. It needs to be something that can extrapolate to many facilities and can be broadly delivered. So we think about these five design principles when we approach cell therapy. So from an immune matching point of view, we have an autologous program, and we can do in autologous HLA or fully allogeneic um, in any one of the paradigms. But our, uh, uh, one of our approaches is this HLA matching strategy. The concept is that if there's 100 people in this room, one of you by statistics is an HLA homozygote, meaning you got the same copy of the HLA genes from mom and dad, obviously. And so you match a higher proportion of the population as a, as a donor. So if you go out and you find the right donors, then you can pre-compute a small bank of people that would match everyone in this room. And it turns out that about 200 people in the United States will match 95% of the U.S. population. So if you go about building a bank for that, which we have done, we have a three-phase plan. The first is this 35% bank. We have that completed. We now cover the top uh, five genotypes in the U.S., basically. Uh, we're working on the phase two, which is 95% coverage, and phase three, which is in the planning stage, um, is to build a uh, pilot bank for all the major geographies. So phase one is complete. Our partners and our own programs have access to that right now. Phase two um, will be essentially complete by the end of next year or very, you know, next year sometime, um, and phase three is in planning. So our, and our guarantee is that as we continue to push this standard, you have to remember that GMP is actually CGMP, current good manufacturing practice. So we continue to push this envelope. We, we believe we're setting the standard here, but we have a guarantee to our customers that if you standardize with us today, that tomorrow you won't have an extrapolation risk. We're managing that comparability risk for you. Um, so 
in terms of our cell therapy pipeline, it's at a very high level, and I don't have time to go into all these things, but um, these are the areas where we've taken our expertise in research models and in research scale manufacture and applied that cell type to a therapeutic indication with, with, a, with a clinical spec. So we have an ocular program in AMD and in, um, and in retinitis pigmentosa and cone rod dystrophies, a cardiac program, a neurodegenerative program specifically in Parkinson's, and an oncology program in what you, you broadly known as CAR-T and CAR-NK. I'll mention today uh, a new development in our, ops, in our um, ocular program, which is the formation of a subsidiary focused specifically on that disease area, and I'll talk to you a little bit about why we did that at the end of the talk, or midway through the talk. So at a high level, uh, just as a summary, there's just one slide on each of these things, but um, our Parkinson's program. So um, the beauty of Parkinson's uh, is that cell therapy has been proven to work. Uh, it's, we've got 25, 30 years of data that shows that in some patients, the fetal grafts reverse the Parkinsonian symptoms and arguably actually basically cured the patient. It was a very small subset of patients. There were many variables. Most patients didn't respond. Obviously, serious problems with it, but fetal grafts can work. And what that proved was that if you had the right cell, you could actually help the patient. So in 2010, 2011, there was a publication showing what we believe is the right cell, which is a floor plate-derived midbrain dopaminergic neuron. Um, we took license to that method, and we're manufacturing it in the billions today. And that's what you see in the pictures there. Um, of that's post-thaw. That you know you can get these in a cryovial now. Um, effectively, thousands of doses manufactured at a time. They thaw, um, they engraft, and I just show some pictures down there. But um, in both rodents and monkeys, we're getting some really exciting data. For example, I just show you one picture there of um, reversing the chemically induced Parkinsonian tremors in a rat. So the Parkinsonian model. So that's, that happens to be amphetamine-induced rotations. But um, I really think we're on the precipice of, of, um, of something significant in Parkinson's with this kind of an approach. In cardiac, um, we have, uh, I highlight this one because I want to show you our approach here. If you look at the top there, manufacturing method, time zero is an IPS cell, and at the end there is whatever, the end of the process. What we do when we develop a method is the ability to isolate intermediates along that pipeline and cryopreserve them and we can do that in the billions, and that gives us the ability to test, to find out what is the appropriate specification. So I just show it here because in, in cardiac it's a nice example. We can isolate, we have three clinical candidates we're in active testing. Um, cardi you might, candidate one is a cardiac progenitor. It is specified to the heart field. It can make any cell type in the heart, but only the heart. So um, it'll make the heart muscle, vascular, and stromal supporting cells. So there's that one. It's, high, it's still proliferative, has some plasticity. Candidate two is, a, is, full, is now specified towards a cardiac muscle cell, but is still immature, and candidate three is a mature muscle cell. Um, and each one of them has different, perhaps, preclinical and clinical, <clears throat> clinical properties. We don't think anybody's approached cell therapy this way with control over the manufacturing method, so you can actually test to find out what the best candidate is. This is what we do in all of our programs. Same thing in the dopaminergic project. Um, so all these candidates are thawed and ready for use. We're targeting intramuscular injection in heart failure, uh, but there are so many ways that you can use this capability that we have an active partnering program where we, um, we look for partners that are taking different approaches, either different indications or different cell types, different methods of introduction, uh, things like patches and scaffolds, recellularized material, vesicles, all, different cell, all kinds of things. And we look for ways that we can, um, that our partners can benefit from our programs and our expertise without actually competing with what we do. Um, and it's working pretty well, and I just have an example there of a published study uh, that's one published study by Jordan Lancaster, I think is in the room here. Thank you, Jordan. Um, so, and we have some really beautiful data now in, um, in rodents and in, and in uh, balloon infarct pigs coming soon. So um, lastly, I just talked to you about the ocular program. So this is what you might consider a, a contract development project for the National Eye Institute. So uh, the National Eye Institute approached us. We, we responded and won the bid to be, think of it as CDI Inside, their therapeutic program. It's an autologous AMD trial. They asked us to do GMP grade reprogramming and then develop a method for GMP grade manufacture of RPEs. We do that, we give it back, the cells back to the NEI, they do the preclinical studies and submit the IMD. So, um, but I put this up because this is an example of how we work with partners. This is a contract directly with the NEI, and, and it's uh, just finished. It's actually in the last month or so finishing. We completed ahead of schedule and on budget. 
So, and I think you'd, the scientist here is Dr. Capel Barty, B-H-A-R-T-I, at the NEI, and you can uh, contact him if you have questions. So, at a high level, then, our ocular pro we have this, um, this process, and I just put this slide up because I wanted to highlight one thing. The plot in the middle there is um, the, the, um, the, the line plot shows um, a squiggly line, which is the process yield for all these different runs. This is uh, 70 different operators, different HLA, different IPS lines, HLA lines. Um, we have this, you know, we have probably over 100 runs now, examples like this, where you can show the red is the output from the process. Reproducible output across operators, across production runs, across days, across IPS lines, donors, HLA, this is what we do. I don't believe anybody in the world has been able to do that yet. That's a lot of work, and we're obviously pretty proud of the group, but that's what we do um, in an example in an autologous um, paradigm. And, um, and they plan to submit an IND in 2017-2018. So um, in our ocular program, we, we recently announced, and you might have seen this a few weeks ago, um, that we launched uh, in collaboration with Dr. David Gamm at the University of Wisconsin, a startup he has founded, and we are his partner, um, to focus on ocular cell therapy. We did this because it um, allowed us to, with David, to recruit the key opinion leaders, gives us some flexibility on partnering, um, gives, you know, as a startup, gives you the nimbleness of a startup with the full backing and support of Fujifilm Regenerative Medicine, which is a phenomenal uh, organization. So uh, Opsis Therapeutics, which you'll be hearing lots about, this is just the, the founding principle, you'll be hearing an announcement periodically, lots of announcements about who's on the team and what we're doing, um, but it has access to the, the cell candidates, the HLA matching, material science and engineering at Fujifilm, uh, the GMP manufacturer and development regulatory, which we, uh, we have a lot of expertise at Fujifilm in uh, regulatory approvals. We have multiple cell therapies approved in Japan, CMO operations around the world, um, so it's a great step forward. So that's, that's an example. Now, how, how partners work with us, I put this up because um, just to help clarify it. The first is we have these internal programs, cardiac, ocular, Parkinson's, and oncology. They're centered around our therapeutic candidates, our choices for um, you know, what cell type and what indication. It may involve a new co-structure, sort of like Opsis Therapeutics, or it may be the parent company. But in the end, it's, it's led by us and, and a scientific team. Uh, it has access to the IPS manufacturing platform it's financed by us and Fujifilm, but it's also open to strategic partners. We, if a partner that brings something to the table, we, we're, we're interested to listen. Um, and then there's the rest of the world, the incredible opportunity space we're all working on here, which is um, every other great idea. So our approach to that is a cell therapy accelerator program where the partner brings their therapeutic candidate and their method of manufacture, and it's a lot like what I showed you with the NEI. In that case, Dr. Barty brought his, his autologous AMD trial to us, and we developed the clinically compliant method um, as a CDI inside. It begins with license to our platform and, and may end with contract development and manufacturing services. Um, it can be done as a standard contractor and a risk sharing model. We're happy to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, has access to either autologous or HLA. Um, and Fujifilm is developing uh, uh, a corporate venture capital function which might assist the partner too. And the contact person for that is the gentleman in the front row here, Brian McCalligan, my colleague. So um, that program I think I've stated here, but uh, the benefits to the partner is you get access to our industry leading process development and manufacturing, um, our clinical grade experience. You get access to the uh, HLA and autologous expertise. Freedom to operate, we think a lot about IP and making sure that what we do uh, enables the customer. Um, if we, 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 are, we make sure that when we develop or use a method, we have the right to use it. Um, and then the expertise of both CDI and Fujifilm. And so in summary, um, we've built a pretty extensive catalog as a research products company, 14 different cell types, developed and manufactured to that research spec in the billions. Um, we've taken that expertise now and we've developed our own therapeutics pipeline, which includes four internal uh, programs, um, all of them with mature cell therapy candidates, with um, a mature manufacturing capability, some great, some of them with, already with great preclinical data, um, and some aggressive IND expectations. Um, all of these are backed by the full power of uh, Fujifilm Regenerative Medicine, which who agrees with us in the vision, the 2040 vision of how what we're doing here is, is a new branch of medicine that will change the way we do research in medicine. 
And, um, and finally, we had this cell therapy accelerator program, which gives partners access to our development capabilities and our manufacturing capabilities uh, to help speed up their development. So that was what I intended to say to you today. Thank you. And I have six seconds. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you.